everyone, and welcome to the Internet Report. I'm Angelique Medina, and I'm joined today by Archana K. Sivan. We're going to be walking you through the state of the Internet and looking at the previous week and all of the interesting events and outages that have taken place. We're going to be doing this show on a weekly basis, but for our first episode today, we're going to be looking at performance starting back in the middle of February all the way through to the end of last week, which is March 29th. And so we're going to uh, primarily be looking at outages today and looking at the overall trends for the last six weeks, because there has been a lot of changes in terms of how traffic um, is traversing the internet. And so we're gonna see if there's been any noticeable impacts in terms of performance. And just to give you a sense of, of what our data set looks like, we have uh, here at Thousand Eyes, thousands of sensors that are distributed around the globe. We have a pretty broad coverage, particularly in North America, but also in Europe and uh, uh, Asia Pac. And all of these sensors are effectively uh, measuring uh, internet and application performance. And that generates billions of uh, telemetry data points. And that data is being used to detect outage events. And so we're going to kind of give you a little bit of a, a roll up of, of these events across different providers. And so just to um, kind of give you a sense of what we're looking at from um, a macro sense. So these are outages that are taking place across ISPs and public cloud providers, uh, collaboration application providers, uh, which we we'll also refer to as UCAS providers, as well as edge services. So edge services include CDNs and DNS and security as a service providers. And across all of these providers, um, we've seen a pretty significant increase over the last six weeks. So, just from the start of uh, the where we're looking at, so this is um, February 17th towards uh, the end of March, we're seeing a 42% increase in the number of outages that we've detected. And the last couple of weeks have both represented um, peaks in the number of outages that we've seen. So topping you know 300 plus um, week over week the last couple of weeks. And we've also seen some records not only for ISPs, but also in some of the UCAS providers as well. So we're gonna to touch on that. Um, a lot of folks have asked, you know, where are we seeing some of the major issues in terms of providers? So we're gonna look at ISPs first and, um, or excuse me, we're gonna look at cloud providers first. Uh, so the interesting thing about the cloud providers, and again, a lot of folks have wondered, how are they holding up given the tremendous uh, amount of traffic that they are likely under, especially since there's a lot of remote workers and many enterprises are using cloud providers to host their VPN concentrators, their VPN gateways. And so they're getting a lot more inbound traffic, simply uh, looking at it from the standpoint of enterprises and, and remote workers, and likely are also seeing increases uh, from a consumer standpoint. And overall, we're not seeing any significant increase in the number of outages. These numbers are pretty normal for what we would see with cloud providers and nowhere near peak, the peak number of outages that we've seen from them. And that is also the case in the United States as well. Even lower numbers, um, not a lot of outages. It was a little bit more on the, um, the week of March 16th, we saw a little bit of a rise, but that's again, well within um, kind of the typical number that we would see for uh, cloud providers. So given that, I mean, is that something that's uh, surprising to you, Archana? You've done a lot of work with cloud providers and performance. Is that something that you would expect? Yeah, that's totally in line with our expectation, right? Because these providers, you know, if you've noticed over the last couple of years, they've been making some significant investments in, you know, their backbone and undersea cables and so on. So in terms of infrastructure and bandwidth, they definitely have the capability. So any increase of traffic that they are seeing is probably well handled. However, you know, it is possible in the future, uh, and even if we do see any um, outages as such, it's maybe because of fat fingering issue, um, something similar to what we've probably seen with, you know, AWS S3 three years ago. Um, but it, traffic overload necessarily does not have to create outages within these um, cloud providers. So yeah, um, I think the data kind of uh, is in line with what our expectations are at this point. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, they know how to manage and, and um, keep a massive network running. Mm -hmm. We have seen outage events. They've typically been due to configuration issues or just, you know, um, infrastructure failures, which, you know, are not something that are related to traffic surges. Those are somewhat, uh, those are events that you can't really plan for. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the overall, you know, they know that they're handling a lot of traffic today and they seem to be holding up well, which, you know, is interesting. We'll cover this again because one of their, uh, at least uh, speak, thinking of Google, uh, one of their senior VPs made a comment about uh, COVID-19 specifically and how they're holding up under the, the increased traffic surge. So, um, in terms of the infrastructure, right? I mean, it has to kind of override all the resiliency and, you know, uh, backup that they have in place already. So, um, yeah, so that's something we should just uh, be aware of when it comes to these cloud providers. You're actually really well prepared to handle the surge in traffic and also any failures that they might have. For sure. Yeah, so it, it's interesting because you would also think and you know, if we kind of move on to the, the ISPs, they also are fairly well provisioned to quickly scale up in terms of their ability to handle traffic loads. Um, Vodafone mentioned they had it saw a 50% increase in traffic. I think uh, it was Verizon said something like 30% increase and they're doing fine. Now we have seen an increase in the number of outages across the ISPs. Now it's a much larger bucket of course than the cloud providers, a lot of different types of, of networks uh, and ISPs. Uh, this includes both mobile providers, broadband providers, as well as uh, transit providers. But there has been a, not a notable up uptick. So you kind of see this like step up, you know, we saw uh, this was a new peak in the third week of, of uh, or rather the first week of March. All of a sudden, there's a pretty dramatic increase in the number of outages. And then subsequent to that, we saw, again, a new record made um, the week before last. And then last week, again, a new record. All of this uh, was um, represented more than 200 outages in a given week, which is not something we've seen um, in a long while. We've only seen that at one other point. So this is pretty noticeable just overall. Um, it's not coming down. It seems to be um, on the rise. So, um, you know, why is that? It's, it's not clear at this point. It could be that the ISPs are making configuration changes um, or they're changing their peering relationships. So there's other things that are going on that might be impacting that. Um, because as you mentioned, the ISPs themselves have said that they're fairly well provisioned from a capacity standpoint. Um, but you're all, we're also seeing in this, this in the US as well. So even just looking at, for example, the, the minimum uh, outage week that we saw in uh, looking at February 24th, something 59 outages. And if you contrast that with last week where we saw 120, I mean, that's a 100% increase in the number of outages. Again, there was a pretty dramatic step, step up going into March. And then that hasn't really gone down all that much since then. So something that we'll keep an eye on, it, we wouldn't expect that the ISPs would just suddenly be overwhelmed, but there could be other reasons why we're seeing this number of outages. And this is uh, interesting too, because the UCAS providers, so these are the collaboration application providers, they are um, under a tremendous amount of strain. I mean, they've said that they've seen unprecedented levels of traffic. They have new users. If you think about all the remote workers and distance learning, I mean, this is a pretty sizable increase in traffic that they're experiencing. We typically very rarely see outage events within the UCAS providers. And it held pretty steady until um, the week before last. So this was the week of March 16th, when we saw a really significant spike in outage events. And this was the case not only globally, but also within the US. So this was a 467% increase um, from the previous week. Now it has started to go down and hopefully we'll see that trend continue where it just represented a, um, an unusual uh, week for those providers and now they're starting to hopefully um, adjust their um, their infrastructure and their capacity to handle more traffic. So it has gone down and hopefully we'll see that continue 
this week. Now, is that surprising to you at all, uh, Archana, that we would see you know, this, this kind of um, a trend where it just dramatically spiked and then, and then went down? Um, I think they're making changes to their infrastructure, probably in the back end to accommodate, you know, um, a lot of these, a lot of the influx. And, and like you said, it's not just remote workers, right? Like this is distance learning and everybody, um, kids are on, on, on these uh, platforms right now. So I think there are definitely some back end configuration changes um, that might have, you know, unfortunately cost an outage. Uh, and I'm hoping over the next few weeks that kind of tapers um, down. Uh, like one of the examples, uh, you know, we we did see the week of March 16th is, is a UCAS provider um, suffered some um, DNS specific, uh, um, you know, uh, issues, uh, not necessarily that their DNS service went down, but we anticipate or, or we are speculating that it could possibly be a configuration change to their DNS records uh, to handle the uh, surge, to handle the influx, right? So um, not surprising, um, but hoping that that actually tapers down because it's so critical right now in terms of um, being connected and, and being productive. Yeah, absolutely. And and the DNS issue, you know, it wasn't, that was just in addition to some of these network issues that we were seeing. Um, the DNS uh, service itself, as you mentioned, uh, was totally fine. This was, was apparently a configuration issue. And, um, you know, again, they're probably making a lot of changes on the back end. But looks like it's headed in the right direction. They are able to scale out pretty rapidly. So we're hoping that that uh, downward trend continues. Um, now, it's interesting, last week, we also saw another instance where there appeared to be some kind of outage event that was not related to traffic surges um, within a cloud provider. And we know this because uh, one of the cloud provider, uh, it, well, in this case, it was Google, um, and one of their executives who was responsible for the network tweeted out that there was an issue where they had a router failure in Atlanta and this issue was completely unrelated to any surges in traffic that were COVID-19 related. He made a point of specifically pointing that out because I think a lot of people are, are concerned about whether the major providers are able to keep up with traffic. Now, um, to talk about this particular outage, because uh, we had a lot of back and forth on this, we're joined by Deepak, and Deepak is joining us from Dublin. So thank you for making time and later in the day. Absolutely, guys. Uh, really happy to be on. Um, and this this was quite an interesting event because you know the impact of a uh, Google a network failure in Atlanta had a massive impact and. And if you look at this data set, this is specifically from our Thousand Eyes employee and user experience data set. And we have a number of users on the left side, different regions of the US trying to access, you know, a number of Google services like Docs, Calendar, Drive. And what's very obviously noticeable is a couple of locations to the East Coast, right? Atlanta and North Carolina. In this case, clearly having huge network loss failures and immediately you know i'm able to pinpoint it to a uh, node in the google network that had issues so this you know was an immediate way for me to uh, know that yeah i can see what the tweet said um and i can see the failure in the network layer um and you know if i move up you know to a slightly different view which kind of paints a different picture uh but this is the um you know end user experience score data set, and you can see how different products within the Google suite are all having, are all showing red, all having dips in experience score, you know, and telling us that yes, indeed, there was a large group of users affected by that simple failure. But then Angelique, you were looking at something interesting on a different data set where the errors were not very network specific, right um do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah that was really interesting because one of the things that we saw was that um yes there were users who were complaining about um issues on the east coast but we also saw on social media that there were other folks who were saying they were able to reach google site but they were basically getting errors um, so what we saw there was pretty interesting because over that period where the incident took place, we saw that um, 
the from locations around the US, there was intermittent availability. Um, so we were seeing, uh, for example, here, that some users were getting errors, some were getting um, receive errors, um, but mostly we were seeing um, 500 server errors. So this is interesting because basically what it means is that the network was totally fine. You were able to get to um, the site or the front door, so there we didn't see any packet loss or latency reaching Google's edge. But then you get to the site and you're seeing that you're, you're basically getting these errors. So why would that be related to this router issue in Atlanta? Um, and so this is something that we discussed quite a lot over, over Slack. So um, why don't you tell us kind of what, what your um, kind of take on this is? Oh yeah, so, so on the data set that I was looking at, right, users were accessing um, a specific node in the, or specific server in Google. And it happened to traverse networks that um, had failures in the Atlanta region and we spotted a network failure. But in the data set you were looking at, we were seeing, you know, the network path to the front end servers being completely clean, but then we see a 500 error, which essentially tells us, you know, when the front end server tried to perform a redirect or retrieve data from the back end server, there was a problem. And immediately, you know, the server throws out a 500. And what we can potentially say is that, you know, when the front end servers were trying to redirect to the back end server, there was a network failure. There might have been a network failure in that path leading to a 500 error, which is, which, which, which makes sense, right? Uh, um, and it's also interesting that a network error would present itself as a 500 to the users. And, you know, we initially thought that this was an application error. We initially thought that Google was having a backend problem until we, you know, did the further investigation and figured this out. Yeah, absolutely. I think that really speaks to the distributed nature of applications. If you think about Google and how they deliver their service, um, yes, you're reaching their front end, but there's all these dependencies on the back end, different um, uh, parts of the application, databases, other pieces of the server that have to be reached over a network, even within Google's own um, uh, kind of network and infrastructure and how they are building out their application. And so even though this network issue took place in Atlanta, it was impacting users on the West Coast, on the South, Southwest, um, all across the US. Um, so that's very interesting. And it's unclear if there's differences in uh, changing network patterns potentially due to increased traffic loads, um, which is why traffic was going through that region for a variety of users, or maybe that's yeah. just normal, we don't know. But either way, I think it's interesting that it kind of points out the, the network dependencies, even on the back end, not just in reaching a service, but also in completing uh, a service. So um, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, we had a couple of other notable outages. In particular, there was a really significant cogent outage. We don't have time to get to that today, but we'll um, likely post some additional details on that on our site, and we'll have some share links in the show notes. So uh, I think awesome. we want to cover from outages. Yeah, cool. Um, that wraps up this week's show. Angelique, thank you so much. And, and Deepak, I know it's late for you uh, in Dublin. So thanks for uh, jumping in and giving us your insights as well. And for everybody out there, I hope you guys found this interesting. Tell us what you feel. Um, leave us a comment or a tweet um, at our Twitter handle. And, uh, you know, if there's anything specific you want us to cover in the next episode, um, leave us a comment as well. Um, feel free to also follow us on uh, blog.thousandeyes.com. Every time, you know, these large scale outages happen, kind of do a deep dive and, and lay out uh, what we saw from our perspective. And uh, we'll be covering the state of the internet uh, in our blogs as well. So definitely feel free to follow us there. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next week. 